Good afternoon, everybody. This is Mark. We're back here for the Daily Recap. It is Monday. So much of the same based on what we saw last week. Obviously, Friday was the day we broke through the key 1600 level onto new highs. Um, and, and at this point, I think the, 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 the race is on. Now, do we have a back test? Is there a back and fill that happens? Sure. But the reality is I think we're going higher. I think retail is going to start chasing. I think the news media is going to start really pumping out, oh, we're, we're going, you know, this market is, you know, at five-year, ten-year highs, five-year highs, whatever. And you got to respect that. The trend is always your friend. And I keep saying that. And the, and the fact is, you know, I actually thought we were going to halt at 1,600, not the, at least one more, one more retest. Didn't happen. We went broke through on Friday. A little bit of continuation today across the board. I think now it's the stock selection game. And I've been saying this across the board. Industry groups are taking turns making their move to new highs and coming out of nice bases. Uh, the one industry group I talked about this morning in my morning call was the banks. I thought they were ready. It feels like they're ready. They've been taking a break. And today they obviously made a little bit of a move. I talked about Goldman Sachs having a nice descending channel that broke through. Now the problem is they make a little bit of a morning move and they don't do a whole lot after, after that. And you could just see, um, you know, I'll put up a 13, 15 minute chart. They didn't really do a whole lot, but that shouldn't scare a lot of people. You just have to respect the fact that that's how this market's trading and you got to trade accordingly. Um, so I think the banks, and if you want to, you know, banks, FAS accordingly, I think Goldman Sachs back to 155, 160. I think, you know, FAS seems like it's going a lot higher even after the split. You have to look at the weekly. It's at highs. So Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, AIG is already at highs. You just got to pick your poison um, across the board. BAC obviously had a good day today. And one of the main reasons was the MBI news. Settling with MBI, MBI closed pretty nicely. Unbelievable move. Obviously, the stock has been dead. A settlement's been reached. Um, we'll see. Heavily, it's still heavily shorted. We'll have to see if there's another move left in it. But go back to your weekly. Doesn't tell you anything. Go back to your monthly. Just understand where their stock used to be. Um, much higher, much higher. Doesn't mean it's going to go there anywhere short term, but it has the potential to be a much bigger move in there. Netflix today possibly, you know, was a possible breakdown, and you know you could have traded accordingly, but then it recovered. I mean, this is the move intraday on the on a 15 minute, 13 minute chart. Went all the way down to 204, went all the way back to 212, and hovered. 210 was that level, and now we'll have to wait and see. It's still hugging its eight-day roughly. Um, little jeopardy, little red light, yellow light at least. You know, I, don't, I, I was long a little bit after the fact that after I was holding 210. I think if it holds 210, that's a little bit of support. If it breaks below 210, that, that will be resistance. That's how I'm playing this particular stock. Google, Apple, continue their move. Um, you know, Apple, uh, I think it's a little extended, but that doesn't mean it's, you know, just because it's not a great long, healthy long, good risk versus reward, doesn't necessarily mean it's a great short. So right now, I'm just a wait and see, and I'll look for shorter time frames. Same thing with Google. Just because it had such a big run, and it has, and it's all-time highs, just because it's gone, gone that way, it should obviously digest somewhere, but are you good enough to time the, the short side? And if you are, by all means, do it. I'm not. I'm going to take a break and let, let it do its thing probably for a few days. Hence where I say the sector rotation. I'm going to keep looking at different stocks, trying to find, you know, uh, trying to find ideas that are timely in, in nature and I, uh, ideally, obviously, being able to take advantage of what's in front of you accordingly. Uh, one move that I really haven't taken advantage of, but unbelievable moves, Tesla, unbelievable chart, keeps banging up against its eight day and then keeps going higher. New highs, heavily shorted. Seems like it's just going to keep doing this, especially if it doesn't go too far away from its moving averages. That's a good sign that you know the shorts aren't really rushing to cover, but at the same time, they're, you know, the trend is still intact, so, and it's not a blow off top. So right now, the trend is still your friend. Another one I've been following and been you know, on top of, CMG, had a nice move today. Now, I did take some off, but to me, technically, it still looks good, and you know, it'll probably trigger some new longs. And you could just see, you know, three, 380s to almost 400s would, would probably be the next level um, I'd be looking at for the stock if it can get some get going. It's a little thinner issue, so it's not for everybody, certainly. 
um, as a lot of stocks are. And oil and commodity stocks, oil stocks woke up a little bit today. I don't really play them that often, just they have not been that exciting. But, you know, you can go down the list. CVX looks okay. Exxon broke above its 200-day, looks okay. OAH, another one, looks okay. Um, FSLR came out with earnings at the close. Uh, last time I looked, it was down, so we'll see if that's going to, you know, give us an opportunity, at least from a tradable point of view, to trade it one way or another. Uh, LinkedIn, take, you know, at this point, let it do its thing for a few days and then try to digest. I still think 170, 175 is the viable, pri viable era, area for LinkedIn as long as this uptrend continues in the tape overall. Uh, biotech's hit or miss, um, but, you know, from a, from a point of view, REGN taking its well-deserved break, but I still think that's going to be viable. ALXN still looks good. I actually took a shot on Amgen. Uh, I think it was either yesterday or Friday or yesterday. Not, not a great looking pattern, but I still think it holds this top third of its trading range. And that's how I'm looking at to get involved in some of these stocks. Best in breed, holding the top third of the trading range. Um, you can go down the list. Home Depot looks great. Lowe's looks great. Uh, some of these EOG, PXD, sick, sick moves. But you got to be in them. You got to know the stocks. You got to know how they trade. You got to know the characteristics. If you don't know the characteristics, you don't deserve or you shouldn't just jump in just based on what, what you're seeing on the chart pattern. And that's what I really try to preach all the time. You got to know your stocks. You got to have an arena of stocks you look at consistently that really are your go-to and you understand. They're all, they all have their individual characteristics that tell you certain stories. You got to know the story. So overall, guys, nothing has changed. I think you know the bid is in this market. Doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of digestion here and there. I think it's just going to be rotation. Um, stock rotation that's going to, going to continue to happen. I think we stay above the 1600 for a time being at this point. Maybe we back test, maybe not. But overall, stick with the trend. It's been working. It's been working all year. Um, minus, you know, you can maybe count three weeks possibly. And I think that's pushing it uh, where, where shorts have been getting paid. Stick with the trend and, and could just continue to be uh, vigilant with your stock selection and, and your homework because I think that's where the money is made, doing your homework, finding your, finding your chart patterns that make sense, and looking for the sector rotations. Hopefully we're on the VTF today. Lots of good information. A um, lot of people, a lot of the community are really you know, stepping up their game. I like to see that. And again, it's all, it's all to help all of us out. So hopefully I had a good day. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms.